Real estate brokers' offices throughout New York State are closed, but buyers are out there and demands for rentals and potential purchases are there as well. I spoke with Annie Holdreth of Daniel Gale Sotheby International about how their business has changed. Welcome to From the Source Pandemic Edition. Annie, how, how has the market changed since COVID-19 has appeared on the scenes? Uh, first of all, Elizabeth, thanks so much for inviting me to be a part of this series. Uh, I think the more information we can get out there about how everyone's working is really important. So thanks for inviting me. And how Daniel Gale Sotheby's International Realty uh, pivoted, I guess, when COVID, when COVID came into play is we went almost 100% virtual and we ha luckily had the tech and the resources to allow our agents to work virtual. The work order that came down from Governor Cuomo deemed us as non-essential, but uh, it did say we could work virtually. We can do virtual open houses. We can show homes virtually with seller's permission. We can go in and do a FaceTime call or a Zoom call like we're doing right now. Right. And uh, this past weekend, we we were pioneers and trailblazers, and the company held over 100 virtual open houses on behalf of their clients this right. past Sunday on May 3rd. And I'm happy to share that we, in the Manhasset office, we had the most of any of, of the 27 offices on Long Island. And... Uh, we have activity as a result of those virtual open houses, which is pretty remarkable. Wow. So who is the, um, who is looking for houses right now? Oh, that's a great question. So what we're seeing is, you know, a direct result of the pandemic. We are seeing buyers from Queens in the city who are in smaller places and this, and it's been in the press, it's been in the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, and people are looking to really escape New York and move out and maybe make that move sooner than they might have. Um, typically in our market, the trigger can be school. Uh, families that live in the city that have school-age children, when it comes time for schooling in the city, it can be expensive for private schools, and they'll make that move for kindergarten. Uh, but we're seeing that Buyers are saying, why are we going to wait? Let's, if we're going to have a different world and a new normal after this, we want to have pl a place where we can both work from home because I think a lot of employers will continue to allow people to work from home. So I'm going to need a home office. We need maybe have to continue homeschooling. So city people. And then within our own community, our locally here on Long Island, we're seeing people who their current home isn't fitting their needs. So they want to make a change. Interesting. Yeah, home office, I'm sure it's going to be a hot yeah. ticket item. <laughs> home office, home gym, because people yes. are not going to their gyms. Uh, you know, Peloton sales are through the roof. You got to have a place for that Peloton. Uh, and also, I think mudrooms, because when we enter our homes now, we're making sure we're not wearing shoes in the homes, we maybe disrobing in our mudrooms to launder those clothes, depending on the places we've been. So suddenly mudrooms have more importance and a different role to play than even before. So I think there will be changes uh, also in design that come out of this. I've been talking to architect friends and I know you had TJ on and I think there will be a change in design and how we live in our homes as a result of this. We're all going to be a lot cleaner. Definitely a lot cleaner. <laughs> um, tell me, have you closed any deals during this pandemic and how was it done if it was? So we have had properties that went into contract prior to the pandemic that needed to close right as the pandemic was happening and things were being shut down. And uh, the attorney partners and the title companies and the banks and the bank attorneys, we have done what we call parking lot closings. We've done completely virtual closings and we've done closings where, sorry, that's my ring doorbell. Uh, we've done closings where it's all been done electronically, emailed around, mailed around. So uh, business is still happening. The title companies that have, uh, who are also electronic or virtual can still do their functionality and get into access to, to look at building files uh, virtually. So uh, we've been fortunate to have those properties uh, continue to close and we're seeing properties being purchased through just virtual showings, which is pretty remarkable too. 
So there is demand for Manhasset, that's for sure. That has not changed. And we don't have a lot of supply. We don't have enough houses um, to really suit those buyers that want to make that move. So we, we need more inventory. That's great. That's great. Um, so going forward, once we step off of pause, what uh, protections will you have put in place when people actually can physically go to see um, a house? So that's an interesting question. Uh, we in the office, I'll start with that, we are making changes in our office just to have a safer work environment um, with physicality and we have as a company put things into place for when we reopen and I don't think we'll have a wide open in the beginning. I don't think we're going to open the doors and have 100 agents come back to the office and right. you may have to come in on an appointment basis. So starting with the office, I think that will become a model too. And we're not so certain homeowners will want us doing public open houses again in the in the near distant future we may continue with this virtual model it's a lot easier on a seller to uh only have to clean the house once a week and we go in and show it uh there may be demand to keep, keep this model going but while we are working virtually even now we'll continue to follow it we are masked we are gloved we are booted um, we are making sure we're asking our homeowners to open all the doors and windows in the house before we come in, like at least an hour before, to create, you know, and change out the air. We are asking uh, anyone that's going to, um, any of our agents, you know, we have to know they are, they're not sick. They haven't been sick. No one at home has been sick. We're asking our sellers the same thing to protect our agents going in. So I think a lot of that will stay for some amount of time. And we'll have to see how the consumer feels because we are consumer driven like any other business on how they want us to work in the future. They may like this model. We have gotten calls from people saying, I'd like to put my house on the market right now because you're only doing it virtually. I don't have to have a parade of people coming through. Yeah. So people might decide that's a good thing to do. Great. Well, thank you so much. I know you're busy, especially with all those virtual open houses and the best of luck to you in the future.